Continuing chapter one, lesson seven, example five, find the inverse function and state any restrictions on its domain. So we have f of x equals x minus three, all divided by x plus five. This is a rational function. Um, and finding the domain of rash, or the inverse of rational functions is a little bit more challenging than say a linear function, quadratic function, or any general polynomial function. Okay, so again, to find the inverse function, we always switch the x and the y and solve for y. So when we switch the x and the y, notice that we have two y's, and we're going to have to find a way to combine that to a single y. Now, a fraction is division, so I would multiply both sides by the denominator y plus 5. Now, after you multiply both sides, I would go ahead and distribute that x that we have xy plus 5x all equal to y minus 3. Again, we have a y on the left side and we have a y value on the right side. We need to combine that together as a single y. Well, in order to do that, we're going to move the terms containing y to the left side and all other terms to the right side. Okay, so I'm going to, I just noticed a mistake. If I subtract y from both sides, then we have xy minus y equal to 5x plus 3. Now, I have a greatest common factor on the left-hand side, a y. On the right side, again, we're going to subtract the 5x, so I have negative 5x plus 3. So notice I have all terms with the y value on the left side and all other terms on the right side. Now, greatest common factor is a y, so I'm going to factor that out. xy divided by y is x. Negative y divided by y is negative 1. So we have y times the quantity x minus 1 equal to negative 5x minus 3. Now, y directly next to this quantity is multiplication. The opposite of multiplying is dividing. So I'm going to divide both sides by x minus y, and that leaves me with negative 5x minus 3, all divided by x minus 1. And I have found the inverse of the function so I'm going to change my notation to f inverse of x is equal to negative 5x minus 3, all divided by x plus 1. Now find the domain. This, uh, the inverse is also a rational function. So to find the domain, we set the denominator equal to 0 and solve. Again, this should be an x minus 1. I moved. So I'm going to set x minus 1 equal to 0 and solve and that means that x is equal to 1. Now what that tells me is x cannot be 1. So when I think of my number line I have an open circle over 1 but I can have any other x value. So my domain would be negative infinity to positive 1 union 1 to infinity. Now, this concludes the second portion of our notes. So we have looked at inverse functions numerically with our table of values, switching the x and the y. We have looked at inverse functions graphically. Okay, we know graphs of inverse functions reflect over the line y equals x. And to find the, in the equation for the inverse, you switch x and y and solve for y. The third part to chapter one, lesson seven, is to check algebraically whether two equations are inverses of each other. So in example six, we have f of x equals negative two x plus seven, and we have f inverse of x equals x minus seven, all divided by two. To check algebraically, and you may wanna put this off because when we ask the question to determine algebraically, if two functions are inverses, everyone wants to switch x and y and solve for y. To check algebraically, we use composition of functions. So we're going to take f of f inverse of x, and we're going to take f inverse of f of x. 
Okay, so this is almost, it's like a review of what we did in section six. So f of f inverse of x. f inverse is x minus seven divided by two. So I'm gonna replace f inverse of x with x minus seven divided by two. And in my function f of x, I'm gonna replace all of the x values with x minus seven divided by two. So f of x is two x plus seven. So we have two times, this is x minus seven divided by two, okay, plus seven. What happens is these twos cancel because I have one in the numerator, one in the denominator, and I'm left with x minus seven plus seven. Negative seven plus seven is equal to x. So if two functions are inverses of each other, okay, and you compose them, it should always result in x. Now, it must be true for both f of f inverse and f inverse of f of x. So f of x was 2x plus 7. So I'm going to take f inverse of 2x plus 7, which means in my inverse function, I'm going to replace my x value with 2x plus 7. When I simplify, 7 minus 7 is 0, so I'm left with 2x divided by 2. Simplify, that equals x. So these two functions are inverses of each other because when I compose both the function and its inverse and compose the inverse of the function, it results in x. So if two functions are inverses, then the composition of functions in both directions will always equal x and you must check both. So in example seven, I would like for you to show algebraically that f inverse, I'm sorry, that my function f of x and my function g of x are inverse functions, which means you have to show me that f of g of x and g of f of x is equal to x. I would like for you to pause the video and try it. And when you're ready, press play to go through the solution. Okay, hopefully you have paused the video and tried it on your own. Now let's go through this together. So to show algebraically that f of x and g of x are inverse functions, I need to show that f of g of x is equal to x and that g of f of x is equal to x. Now, I'm gonna replace g of x with what g of x is equal to, one minus x divided by x. So in my function f, I'm gonna replace my x value with one minus x divided by x. Now, I have a fraction within a fraction. So what I need to do is to get rid of the fraction in the denominator by multiplying everything in the numerator and everything in the denominator by x. x divided by x is equal to one. When you multiply any value by one, the value itself doesn't change. So keep in mind, this is equal to the exact same thing. I'm just gonna make it look different. For example, we have right here 100 pennies. 100 pennies is equal to $1. It's just that $1 looks a little nicer, okay? And that's kind of what we're doing. We're multiplying the numerator and denominator by x to make it look nicer. Now, when I multiply the numerator by x, one times x is x. In the denominator, we have to distribute. So x times one is x, but then when I multiply x times one minus x divided by x, the denominator cancels with the x, and all that I have remaining is one minus x, which is the numerator. Now, if I simplify the denominator again, x minus x is zero, and there's one remaining, x divided by one is equal to x. Okay, this requires strong algebra skills. Now, for g of f of x, I'm gonna replace f of x with one divided by one plus x. So in my function g of x, I'm going to replace each of the x values with one divided by one plus x, once in the numerator, once in the denominator. Again, I have a fraction within a fraction. So I'm going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by one plus x in order to get rid of the fractions 
at the top and the bottom. Now again, we have to distribute. So I have to multiply the one times the one and the one times the x. That will result in one plus x. Now when I multiply one plus x times my fraction, the numerator and denominator are the same, so those cancel, and I'm left with the negative one. Okay, so again, I have to multiply that by the one, I have to multiply that to the one divided by one plus x. Now in my denominator, when I multiply one divided by one plus x times one plus x, those cancel, and I'm left with a one. Simplify the numerator, one minus one is zero. X remains, X divided by one is X. This is going to take practice. Okay, at this time, I would like for you to go to your chapter one workbook, find 1.7 practice, and I would like for you to have 1.7 practice complete by next class, okay? Use your notes to help you. When you are graphing a function, make a table of values. When you are graphing the inverse of that function, you, you, know, you, you do have to find the equation of the inverse, but if you find the equation hard to graph, then use the table of values and switch your x values and your y values to create ordered pairs on the inverse. Okay, for problems that you're showing algebraically that they're inverses, make sure you compose the function both ways. All right, if you have any questions, Wednesday morning is late start, so I will not be available Wednesday morning. I'm available Thursday morning. I'll be available in SRT. In class on Thursday, we'll work a little bit with 1.7. We're also going to get your quizzes back from 1.1 to 1.4, and we're going to review Chapter 1 as we do have a test next week. Hope all of you have a great day, and I hope to see you Thursday.